Welcome back. Today marks day two of Severe Weather Awareness Week. During severe weather season, we get a lot of reports from storm chasers and spotters. Storm Track 9 meteorologist Liz Sefcheck tells us how they help in tracking storms. Every spring, researchers, weather enthusiasts, and thrill seekers alike look forward to the same thing. Oh, baby! Tornado! Tornado! On the ground! On the ground! If anybody has a remote interest in severe weather, I always say they got to go on at least one storm chase because seeing a tornado for the first time is just a life changing, just kind of like awe inspiring event, which is totally cool. And then once the nerves calm down, you want to go do it again because it's just such an adrenaline rush. Even some universities meteorology programs will go out in research groups like the UW Whitewater Weatherhawks, where they are the eyes and ears for National Weather Service offices issuing tornado warnings. But even in school groups, no one immune to the dangers of a chase. Safety is definitely number one priority for me when we're out chasing um, to stay safe and um, be be knowledgeable about what the storm could potentially do. And while driving around and stopping to take pictures may seem like a solo sport, there's a lot more teamwork that goes into a successful storm chase. Uh, any chase team needs a good driver and a good navigator, and it all happens in those front two seats. And as long as there's good communication and the driver can keep their cool, and you've got a navigator that understands radar meteorology and, and can work a map and, and give good directions, you're gonna be just fine, but um, there's definite and like a cohesive amount of communication that needs to go on. I would definitely highly suggest um, if you want to get into chasing is to uh, try to meet up with somebody who does have some experience. Where are they oh, you hit right, right there! Oh, you got that, Tyler! That, Tyler, you got that! That hit the pole right in front of us. Wow. I think I'll just live vicariously through their experiences. Of course, this type of research does expose storm chasers to all dangers that come along with the severe storms. So Liz and the other experts say it's not something that you should just go out and do. You do need to have proper training for that. Now, your Storm Track 9 weather. We have got some cold weather here. The air feels like it's just it's just so bitter cold and it's sitting right on top of us. Yeah, we're like the cold spot in the whole nation here, as you're going to see in this map. Right in the upper Midwest, we're just shivering away, aren't we? That just figures, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, take a closer look at this. The high temperatures today, only in the 20s and 30s in the northern part of the Midwest here. And then uh, you can really see that blue dome is carving out a good part of the country because the jet stream is diving southward from the Pacific Northwest all the way down through the Southern Plains states and then it curls up toward New England and everybody north of that is seeing those temperatures well below normal. So that's uh, covering a lot of territory today. You have to go all the way down toward Florida and Georgia to see some summer like temperatures. Also Southern Texas and parts of Arizona and California also in the 70s today. As far as the uh, numbers today for Wassa, the high was 27. And that's a whopping, uh, what is that, uh, almost 30 degrees below normal. Just crazy out there. 18 for the low this morning. That, too, is well below the normal low of 33 and a trace of snowfall so far. Now, the Wassa high temperature tracker does show a gradual change. So if you're not a big fan of this cold weather this time of the year, hang in there a couple of days. It'll feel nicer toward the end of the week in the upper 40s by Friday. 50s over the weekend and then a little up and down next week, but overall much warmer than it has been recently. So we're still dealing with these uh, scattered snow showers. They just kind of make you dizzy looking at them. There's so many, but they're small in nature and they'll come through with a quick heavy flurry and maybe last a couple of minutes and then they move away and then another one builds up uh, a few minutes or a half hour after that. And that'll be the case at least through about eight o'clock this evening. Then they should gradually fall apart. Let's zoom into a couple of spots here. You notice how there's a few slightly heavier ones running from parts of Oconto and Forest County back across Langley County, stretching into eastern Lincoln and southern Oneida County as well. And a few more heavier ones uh, showing up here south of Wisconsin Rapids and south of Plover as you're tracking down toward Plainfield, south of Watoma, also back over toward Adams Friendship and to the north of Nesita as well. So they're going to be with us for a couple more hours. But again, the rest of the nation, nothing too terribly stormy. A few heavy showers down toward northern Florida. Otherwise, a lot of spots are fairly dry. Here's the view up in Land Lake showing some of the dark clouds rolling through. And we'll take you on to Stevens Point showing partly cloudy conditions right now. Temperature in Stevens Point is 28, but the wind chill only 19. Wind still fairly brisk out of the west. And throughout the area, a lot of 20s showing up where that snow cover is deeper 
We've been struggling where it's uh, less snow on the ground, a little bit warmer in Green Bay at 34. So our wind chill factor is as cold as 8 degrees right now in Rhineland or 16 in Marshfield. Here's our Pick City forecast tomorrow for Junction City, showing readings in the teens early on, mid-30s for the afternoon. A few spotty snow showers for the afternoon as well. Future track is indicating quiet weather later tonight and early tomorrow. Then a few of those spotty snow showers in the afternoon. They'll once again die off for tomorrow night. Our low in Wassa tonight, 15 degrees. A few spots could actually make the upper single digits to the north. And we'll have west-northwest winds at 5 to 10. Tomorrow topping out at 35, so just a few degrees warmer than it was today. Partly cloudy generally, but a few scattered snow showers in the afternoon. Wind from the west, northwest at 7 to 15. Some sunshine Thursday and Friday, highs in the 40s. We hit the 50s for the weekend. There might be a rain shower Saturday evening, then again Sunday evening. Cooler on Monday and then pretty nice on Tuesday with a high.